All right. Uh, welcome, everyone, to uh, the Northampton Urban Forestry Commission meeting, uh, October 2nd, 2024. Um, at this time, if there's members of the public here, which I see Kent. Hello, Kent. I don't know if you have any commentary in the public comment. No, not today. Not 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 today. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Kent. Good to see you. Um, all right. Um, moving on. Uh, review and approve the minutes of 9-18-2024. Did folks have a chance to review them? I need another two minutes. Take your time, please. I've finished reviewing them, Rich, so. Okay. I'm finished. Okay. Any um, changes? Any suggested changes? All right. Seeing none, could uh, we get a motion to accept the minutes as presented, please? You muted, Rich. Yeah. I move that we accept the minutes. And I will second that. Can you hear me now? Oh, uh, it was Rich Parrish who was muted. Oh. He was making a motion, but I could see right. his lips. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, there's been motion, motion made in the second. Uh, second. Uh, do we have a? Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, Bonnie, could you please do a roll call? Uh, Rich Persoliti. Uh, yes. Susan. Yes. David? Yes. Rich Parrish? Yes. All right. Um, chair report and tree warden report. Um, have very little other than to tell you that um, Carolyn, um, Carolyn Mish, this is in regards to the significant tree ordinance, Carolyn Mish uh, sent me the revised draft I am in the process of reviewing it. I have a couple of questions for her. Uh, once those questions get resolved, uh, I'm going to send it to the full commission. Uh, and then I would like the commission to look at the the draft. And it's going to be in a track changes document. So you can sort of see the few changes so they're clear. Um, basically, I would like to be I would like the commission to be prepared to discuss it at our next meeting. So I'll send it to the commissioners beforehand, but I need a few questions answered. Uh, so I just need a, I need, a, need a, a couple more days. Just, to, I mean, I need another day to look at it. It's just got to sit with Carolyn, but uh, man, that's, uh, I don't really have anything else. We don't have any public shade tree hearings scheduled. I don't have anything that is, um, uh, in the pipeline, um, there is, if you're, if you're, if you're interested, which some of you may have done this already, but there is a tree steward training put on by Department of Conservation and Recreation. I don't know if you've been to that, um, but we do a tree steward training in two places in the state. Uh, one is, uh, the closest one is in Springfield on the 18th. So if someone is interested, or maybe someone from Tree Northampton might be interested, Sue, I could send you the information. 18th of October? Yes. It's what nine, are the times? Nine to nine to four thirty, I think. Wow, that yeah. sounds really good. Yeah, and lunch is they've normally been multi day. Yeah, no, what they did this year the last two years is they instead of doing one in the state, they've done they've done two and they've cut them down to a day each. And they've done one at Mount Ida College and they've done last year it was at uh, UMass Amherst. This year it's gonna be in Forest Park. So I can send wow. the commission the information um, to that. Meeting. Okay. Um, trying to think if there's anything. I mean, I, there's really, it's been, it's been uh, a quiet. So I don't know how to quite take that. Well, we'll just 
take it as it is, I suppose. Um, but I'm just, you know, working on tree, you know, tree requests, tree removal requests, uh, working with Rich. Got an email from Rich about a bunch of trees that Tree Northampton is going to remove. But we can talk about those, I think, later on in the fall planting um, section. Um, and uh, just doing a lot of trench permits and a lot of dig safes for the planting. So we can talk about that as well. So that's been kind of taking up some of my some of my technological time. Um, uh, oh, actually, I do have one thing to read from Molly. Molly Hale is not going to be here. She's in Philadelphia. Um, she wanted me to tell the commission that uh, you can report for me that I received from Kent the list of downtown Northampton planting sites that includes owners' names and addresses. Uh, however, only a few, only a very few are owners occupying the building. Most are landlords who live somewhere else or trusts or LLCs and other such entities that can't be reached in person. I haven't had a chance yet to write the letter that would go to the entities such as these. It would be beneficial for us to strategize about our approach to these owners. For example, what follow-up would the letter, you know, what would the follow-up look like um, to the, after the letter is sent? Um, and she said, I think I can make the October 16th meeting and everything will be much calmer for me come November. So, um, so that's that was her. I don't know, Kent, if you have anything to add to that because you've been working with Molly. No, I I haven't talked nope. about the list directly with Molly. Um, okay. All right. Um, okay. That's I'm really about well. be away on the 16th, so I'll miss that meeting. Okay. Um, that's really all I have, unless anyone has some questions. No questions. Okay. All right. Um, set, setback planting initiative. Um, I can just talk briefly. Um, I think we mentioned, unless someone else has something to add, please do. I was able to file all the setback, uh, documents for the, uh, housing units that were built on Burt's Bear Road, where there were setback trees planted prior to them being sold. So Habitat for Humanity entered into a setback agreement with the, with the city to plant trees uh, on the property before they were sold to the individual re uh, new residents. So we were able to file those in time. So that's done. Um, Christina has uh, stopped over at the um, shop twice with a couple of handfuls of uh, setback documents that I need to get filed at the registry as well. So that, that's, uh, that's, a that's good. Um, she seems to be, uh, marshalling along very well. Uh, she has all, her own well-oiled machine. Um, I also, um, visited a couple of other communities, uh, last week and I handed out our setback planting brochure sort of as a, um, a guide because people are asking me questions about planting outside of the public right of way, et cetera. So I use our guide as um, sort of a talking point because it's a really nice guide. Um, and uh, Sue, I do have those poster board signs. Do you want some of them? Yes. How many, I how many do you want? Need to come up there. Just three or something. Okay. I can I also think... drop I can also drop them off in my travels if you want. Unless um remind me in the past Mm -hmm. What did we do with them? Did we put them by baby trees? Yeah. So if we planted a tree. Prominent places. Yeah. We we planted a tree. We put it out in the tree belt. Um, you know, if like you did a setback tree, you could put the you could put the sign right in the front lawn if the residents are okay with it, or you can put it in the tree belt just for exposure. So I guess I'd take a couple of them and then I'd be have my eye out for um a good some good locations yep. well traveled yep a nice looking tree yep on a lawn yeah thanks yeah you know it would be a nice place actually would get a little would be in florence center where we planted those original elms that are uh i think rich knows where um it's right next to the old uh the old the old Florence nursing home that was there was the blue building. It's now like a CSO office, I believe, clinical support office. 
there are some elm trees we planted there. They're actually truly not a, those were not, they don't have a setback agreement for those particular trees. We've just, um, but it would be a nice place because those trees are beautiful. So places like that would probably be, um, would be uh, a good, uh, good, good thought. Thank you very yeah. much. Okay. Um, any, uh, ha uh, has anyone been working with Christina other than what I just mentioned about getting the agreements? Has anyone sort of followed up with her or, uh, gone with her while she's done her setback routine? Do you know of Sue? Not that I know of. Um, Sue and, and Rich, I, I emailed Christina this morning. Okay. Offering to shadow her. And I copied Kent on that. Okay, great. So we're Thank kind of you. waiting, waiting, waiting for her to get back to us. But that's I, I have reached out to her. Okay. All right. Okay, so we're still plugging away. I have to. Uh, I'm gonna. I got a note to send our setback agreement to Councillor Jarrett so he can include it in the newsletter. So. And I should actually see if we will send a couple to the mayor's office too. Um, okay. All right. Uh, any other comments about the setback? Okay. David and I were thinking about starting just taking out some of the door hangers on some of the locations on Molly's list. Yep. Um, just to get started with that. Yep. Is that, is that how many? How many do you, you want? How many do you want, Ken? Oh gosh. Um, I don't know. Twenty. What do you think, David? I, I'd say more like forty. And I think there's seventy sites on the list. So. Yeah, I, I might think it's best to stage the uh, the distribution of those just. In case you get a big reply, you know, there's going to be a, a long waiting list to, with Christina. So, yeah, I wonder how likely it is. I'm, I'm more, I think it will be, be lucky to get some reply. Yeah. But I, that's just my guess. Um, I mean, I don't think we'll put out 40 right away but I don't know how many do we have rich uh thousand I think I had a bought, bought a large box because it was uh you know it was to, to price yeah you know price I couldn't refuse yeah well I got a, I got a box of those and a box of door hanger so well let me help you store some of those I I will bring some I'll you want me to stop by your place and drop them off Sure. Travels. Uh, can you remember your address on Aldridge Street again? Yeah, it's number one. Number one. Okay, that's easy to remember. Okay. It's uh, it's the next next to the corner house. It's one okay. house from. All right. I from will try to um, get them down to you tomorrow because I have to go to Bridge Street in the Bridge Street Cemetery early in the morning. So I'll just leave them on your doorstep or something. Okay. Great. All right. Okay. Uh, and and Rich, you mentioned maybe wanting to so Ken and I provisionally scheduled a, a a field visit uh next week okay 10 to 11 a.m if you want okay. to join or if any any other commissioner wants to join sorry what, when is it what what day david uh let's see that would be the 9th so wednesday october 9th 10 a.m to 11 a.m and yeah. we're we're going to meet right across from the smith alumni house okay um, what's what's the road bedford terrace i think six bedford terrace yeah I don't think I'm going to be able to join you, but thank you for doing this. Is that for just looking for places to put door hangers and things? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. um, and actually could, could you summarize Molly's message from Philadelphia? I didn't, cause sure. I, it's, yep. it's relevant, but I don't think I got yep. it. Um, so, uh, she said to this, she received, uh, the list that Kent generated for the downtown planting sites that includes owners' names and addresses. However, uh, very few owners are occupying the building. Most are landlords who live 
somewhere else or trusts or LLCs and other such entities that can't be reached in person. Uh, I have not had a chance yet to write the letter and would uh, that would go to these entities. Uh, it would be beneficial for us to strategize our approach to these owners. And then uh, an example of that would be what would be the follow up to the letter after the letter is sent, you know, if there's no response. So that's and she that's where she's at. All right. Yeah. Ken and I talked about this, too. We, okay. we talked about Smith College as an institutional owner that needs special special attention. I mean, you're not going to leave a door hanger. No. On the president's door. So. I mean, well, I mean, we could. I don't know if it would. I don't know if the president would. Maybe they do a setback tree. You never know. But. <laughs> uh, but yeah. That would be interesting. Yeah. So I guess Ken and I will focus on the uh, <clears throat> the places that, that are not, you know, that, that are owner occupied. Okay. To the extent we can intuit what the, where those places are. Okay. I think that sounds, I think that sounds great. It's a, it's a start, right? You have to. It's have a to start, start. Yeah. It's just, yeah. it's the way to, to yeah. test. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, Christina um, seems to be generating quite a bit of business with the setbacks. I think I have like six in a folder <laughs> that have to be filed, plus the one I just filed, so that's seven. I mean, you know, that's actually really good, and that's. But I mean, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of conversation that is involved in, in time on her part um, to actually meet with the residents and then have multiple conversations and then coordinating. You know, what do we what do we actually have for nursery stock and I mean, I, it, I think it's great. We we're we're going in the right direction, um, but yeah. So I mean, it is a start. So I'll drop those off, Kent, Sue. I will bring the signs down and leave them somewhere, either on your on front my porch. Porch. Yeah, yeah. Great, thank with, you. With little, yeah, with the little push pins. I got to put some of the stickers on them. I'll have to get them out of the attic. So I'll do the that both tomorrow morning. Um, hi, Jordan. Hey, sorry, I'm late, folks. I have a a commute. So nice to be here with you. Good good to see you. Glad you could make it. Um, we were just talking about the setback planting initiative. So I don't know if you've had any questions before we sort of move on. But basically, some, to summarize, uh, Kent and David are going to sort of canvas the work on the setback locations with Molly that Kent identified in his list. They're going to have a little uh, walk next Wednesday the 9th at 10 a.m. in front of the Smith College Alumni House. So if you wanted to join, but I think you were probably working. Uh, and, I am working. I did and, get uh, Molly's note and responded. I'm happy to meet with homeowners. Uh, she said she might send me a list. And uh, once there's sort of an understanding of either a template or sort of um, how the conversations are going to go, I'm very happy to initiate those. Okay. Excellent. Okay. And um, so, yeah, that's pretty much like a quick synopsis of what we talked about. I think if I missed anything, please let let me know. Uh, so, if there's no other questions, I'll just go to the fall planting schedule. Uh, I can say that we did not plant last. We've planted two two times. I, you sh I should know this, right? I deliver the trees every time. I think we've planted twice, maybe three times so far. And last Saturday we didn't plant, and um, the previous Wednesday we didn't plant. So we were off by a week. So today we put out five trees. Rich, did you plant today? No? Okay. No, I, I didn't plant, but I went by there, and yeah, they, Pond Street and Service Center, Five trees. They should be in. Yep. Yep. We delivered. We delivered all that yesterday. Yesterday morning. Um, the ground is uh, still pretty dry, even though we did get a decent rain last um, last weekend. It's pretty parched. So hopefully we will get. I think we're supposed to get some rain this weekend, and maybe heavier rain the beginning of next week, and then it's going to turn colder uh, or cooler. I should say, not colder, cooler. 
But uh, Jen, I Jen and I have to meet. Um, I think we're going to try to meet face to face tomorrow just to go over the planting, um, the dig safes that are ready to go, uh, along with the trench permits, and also uh, we have a plant material list that we put together that actually is gone to Amherst Nursery for pricing. So we got. Um, I sent it back to John to make some additional comments and actually to ask them to upsize a few of the sizes. Uh, he he does. They do have the sweet gum moraines there, but they're not in grow bag. They're going to be in B and B. So um, he said he has a lot of difficulty getting a sweet gum moraine and a, as a liner. So they whatever he took, he could get, and he planted them in the field. So they'll be probably inch and a quarter B and B, a little on the smaller side, but hopefully they'll be. Hopefully they'll be okay. And uh, I think we'll know tomorrow whether or not we're going to plant on Saturday. So that's what Jen and I are going to discuss. And then hopefully we will um, do, uh, you know, continue planting. I also know that Bob Haxby and Rich, I think you and Wendy maybe went with him and pruned those trees on, on uh, Moser Street. We did. <clears throat> yeah, that whole stretch there. So... There's lots of brush piles and the trees still look nice. Okay. The, the brush piles are gone. And the uh, last tree at the end that we're, we need to remove should have been removed today as well. So that that's in the dig safe pipeline. Uh, and I just uh, got to put a trench permit together for it. So that um, project will move along in the next removal project for us to come in and actually do some uh, planting as Ridgeview. There is, I will tell you how many trees there are to be removed there. And these are trees that all are um, all infected with, uh, they are all in levels of decline, emerald ash borer, so one, two. There's 15. So there's 15 ashes planted on that street along with uh, red oak and... Um, sugar maple but all Rich, the ash I have a question about planting on top of where a stump has been ground um yep. friend of mine is 75 harrison yep um i i understand that homeowners texted me the ground the stump was ground i mean is that something we just go ahead and plant right on top of uh it so it really it's all depends upon about location so if it's a if it's a really large stump in a spot like that and the stump is really um, like, or the the root flare is really tight to the pavement on the curb and the sidewalk side. We can only grind the stump down so much. So you sort of have to try to offset it, which means you have okay. to go into a, into potentially a part of the root system that has not been ground. Yeah, if we put the, one to the left there, we've staked it, yep. but um, actually where the tree was, it doesn't sound like we're going to be able to just replace, use that same spot. I don't uh, think there's a lot of wiggle room there. No. It, it, and if you have a, a stump that you're grinding that is in a large uh, soil volume area where there's no hardscape, you can, you that stump grinder can go down almost like 24 inches. So you could actually put a tree right back in the existing stump hole. But Harrison, um, it's not a bad tree belt, but it's not a wide open space. It's, it's not. No, it's not a so wide open space. So, so why not? okay, thanks. That yep. answers my question. I can tell them we're not going to be able to plant a tree there for okay. this foreseeable future. How's that sound? Yeah, not not in that hole, but you might be able to get it to the left. Okay, we. No, okay, words, I'll go look at it again. Yep. And the other thing too, Sue, is that if we if if there's too many um, existing roots that are there, we could also grind those roots out so we could we could put a tree in there. But we have to do a dig safe because. Once you start working out outside of the the uh, the tree stump, you and you don't have a dig safe. There's there will be some sort of water box utility somewhere in front of these homes. Yeah. So we got to make sure we find so you're that. Saying you saying the grinders could revisit the site? Yes. Yep. Wow, that's interesting. Okay, thanks. Yep. You're welcome. Um, and then the the tree at Moser, the one that was cut down, we're gonna grind that out, and we're gonna put a tree basically. That's a lot of soil volume there. We're going to try to grind the whole thing out after the dig safe comes through just to know where the utilities are because, again, that's all underground utilities there. 
So just like Sovereign Way is the same way, uh, they have underground utilities, so that all has to be dig safe before we stump grind it so we make sure we're not hitting any utilities. And typically the trees um, in, the, in places like those underground utilities, they have to go pretty close to where the existing tree was just because okay. there's not a lot of wiggle room. And one more question. Are dig safe yeah. five and six submitted? They're all submitted. I they're all done. They're dig safe five. There's a couple of stragglers uh for the trench permit that hasn't been signed off. Trench permit. Okay. Yep. Because dig we safe just, for done. We started recruiting volunteers for Saturday. Yep. Um, so I guess you'll meet with Jen and we'll get final word tomorrow. We're yep. trying to amass a couple some people. Yep. Oh, yep, so I, we can keep will, going. We're chomping will, at the bit, Rich. I, I will. I can actually look after the meeting, and I can send you an email to see if they were signed off today. So. Oh, good. That really helps the volunteers planning. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Yeah, Rich. Um, yes. The trees that Jen and I surveyed last week, where there were a bunch of sugar maple, red oak, a couple of red maples in there. Are those some of the trees that you're getting um, from Amherst Nursery? Where? where? This, uh, it was in a development. Oh, gosh, I can't remember the. Uh, it was uh, removals of um, emerald ash borer, all green ash. Oh, they're up on Ridgeview. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Those are those are a combination of trees that we're sourcing from the nursery and, and stuff that we already have in existence, I think. Okay, so, and yeah, and that's the fall planting. That that is the goal. I just I need to. The problem is is that I don't have the at the moment the we have a staff capacity, operational capacity. So I'm we'd have to grind all those fifteen stumps out of there before we plant, which is doable. But I mean, there's um, we're just have an operational limitation at the moment. So we're going to grind everything that we can to at least get. Um, the Moser Street project done, and then I have to bring the contractor in, and I'll have to have them remove everything in one day on uh, Ridgeview, and then we'll come back hopefully the following day and just stay on that job until it's completed. Yeah, yeah, I could. I mean, you know, fall, spring, it had some pretty classic T-shaped exit holes. Oh yeah, yes, yes. I've had my eye on those for a long time, and they all sort of, uh, they all sort of really failed at the same time. I think it just has to do with the. Uh, the drought we then the drought we had not uh a two will be two seasons ago basically so yeah. a, lot, a lot of ash declined very quickly all of a sudden just like that you know after about the third year fourth year of being infected they show a uh, heavy decline yeah <clears throat> um so i that's i really don't have anything else again i'm just waiting for the list to come back from amherst nursery um, there was 25, 26 trees on there, uh, potentially a few more stragglers. So maybe up to 30 to supplement what we have in the nursery. And then hopefully we'll have the nursery cleaned out as well before we have a long way to go. It's October, November. We can plant hopefully right up to Thanksgiving, if not a little farther. So anyone have any questions? No. All right. So, I mean, I don't have a lot on the agenda. I mean, I left a bunch of time there at the end for any other business not anticipated by the chair. Uh, um, here, yes. Rich. Yes. In the uh, mention of the, the dead tree removal, um, would would one of your crew be able to come by and, and just stop at each of the six locations to pick up the trees? Or yes. just tree Northampton to oh no, no you if you tell me they're pulled out where they are if you tell me they're all, all right. pulled out, I will okay you know, are are you gonna do you think you're gonna need some loam or something to backfill the planting hole well maybe only a couple of them might there be significant holes side so I could swing by your place and you you got some piles up there yes we do there's a loam pile underneath the tarp yeah. Uh, on the left hand yeah. side of that long trailer where the bucket loader. All, right. All right. I'll take just, care of this. Yeah, just shoot me a text whenever you are when it's done and I'll make sure everything's picked up so you don't have to all right drag those things out of the back of your car. 
And then the other, um, we'll, we're just going to monitor that other part of that middle part of that list for the trees that look like they sort of set yes, back. Yes, they, they, here. they were at least considerably declined and, uh, but they still had something on them. So we can wait till spring. Okay. To observe. Okay. And, um, Rich Parrish, did you, were you able to get a good list of trees planted 21, um, 2021 and 2022? Uh, yeah, so I'm I'm tree going warden. to request of I'm going to request of the tree warden it to get me a list of 21 and 22 planted trees in any format, and I can add that to my pruning planning scenario because I don't have them on my spreadsheet as of yet. Okay, so. That's Any that's word? already that's already in a Google sheet. I can just I can just copy the tab and send you the copies. Okay, very good. Okay. Please, thank okay. you. Yep. Yep. Uh, and then, Rich, the other trees that are on the bottom of that list, those those trees will just will have to remove and. Yeah, that's entirely on you. They're too big. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Any other any other business not anticipated by the chair? I just have two uh, quick comments about the school trees. Yeah. Uh, the first one is uh, on Thursday, September 19th, that I walked to the Ryan Road campus to yep. take a look at the trees and count them. So they're 19 shade trees and they're, they're overall they're doing well, but the honey locusts closest to the school mm -hmm. need need special care. So okay. we talked about uh, dropping off some mulch and I'd be happy yep. to weed and mulch around those trees. Okay, how much? So, well, if they're 19 trees and it's like two five gallon buckets for each tree, then 38. What, when were you planning on doing this, David? Uh, I can do it like in phases over the next several weeks. Okay. Um, all right. So do you want to, do you want to reach out to me and let me know when you want to start and then I can make arrangements to get the mulch, some, at least some of the mulch up there in phases. Sure. Yeah. If that works. So, that works. okay. And the other thing is that, um, Tony, the head of, um, maintenance for the school grounds he he approved the jfk map in its entirety so oh, at this point great. even really the, just, even the what? giant row in the back the giant row in the back yes yes to the whole thing <laughs> wow great okay david really your work is so wonderful so i think the next action then is to take take a walk through with uh jen okay and anybody else who wants to, maybe you, Jordan, or anybody wants to have a, a hand in the species, in the mix. Okay. If it's um after four thirty or weekends, I'm very happy to, or on a holiday. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, David. Yeah. You're our you are school, uh, knight in shining armor. <laughs> Uh, um, I have some questions about planting. Sure. We have some large sites. Um, um, Ridgeview, you mentioned, I think that's dig safe seven or eight. Dig safe, dig safe eight. Moser is dig safe, se dig safe seven. Eight. Um, St. Mary's. Dig safe seven. Um, I mean, those are big, those are going to be big projects. We're going to do some, um, we're going to much larger wide net recruiting. Okay. I anticipate, or, or do you think you want to break it? I mean, does the DPW have capacity to do some like big projects this fall or um, do you um, need to break them down? It, it would be helpful if we broke them down like 17, 17 bare root trees is pretty easy for us. And it's, but if you're doing 
17 grow bag or 17 B and B trees. That's in one, one day. That's, that's, that's a lot. I think, I think we could break it in half or do it in thirds. Okay. So think, you know, it, it all, it all depends on the tree stock because the B and B tree stock, the way that we deliver it, it gets loaded on a trailer in the yard, but then we have to manually handle it in at every location. Okay. Like St. Mary's is, from the yard, hackberries, London Plain, they're almost all bag trees. Yep. yep. Mosier yep. Street, we'd be waiting for some of those sweet gums. Um, but that's all B and B. Yep. Ridge views is almost all bag. But I was just wondering if if there if you'd be open to us um doing a a larger planting where we spread a wider net and we get a bunch of people in and do yeah, something I mean, a little bit bigger because we've missed some 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 planting dates. Yeah, I'm I'm fine with that. I mean, there's going to be a few uh, like next week. I am going to be uh, in Rhode Island for a few days, so someone else is going to have to handle the moving of the trees. Uh, so you mean I from have... DPW? Yes. Yep. And and we have. Uh, How do we go about that? Uh, you just go through me, and I'll make it happen. But I just I don't want to have a twenty seven tree planting next week. No. Yeah, and then the following weeks. I mean, is, between now and Thanksgiving, so we have yeah, quite a I mean, few that, weeks. In yeah, October that's, and November. That's, that's fine. If you have a or target, we can break them all up and do smaller ones. What? Why don't we do this? Why don't we have a discussion? Um, why don't you send me an email of some target dates that you might think you want to do these larger plantings on? And then we can see if we can make sure that we have the capacity to support the movement of the materials. Okay. You know, I hey, mean, what 10... I'll, do, I'll look up how many we're aiming to plant that we, okay. that we have in these dig safes and divide it by, you know, the smaller planting numbers. And if it looks, you know, really close, like for instance, you know, we could have like torrential rain Saturday for a couple Saturdays in a row or something like that. Right. It might make sense to hedge and try to do something a little bigger, closer to Thanksgiving, you know, to make sure that we yeah. get everything done as a yeah. safe stopgap, you know, safeguard, make sure we don't have a washout here. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with trying to support a larger planting. I mean, just moving five or six trees on a twice a week is pretty it's not it's not that difficult you know moving moving larger uh, you know 15 to 20 trees in a day i might i might have to split it in half to get everything there to start on a thursday afternoon and do the rest on a friday but the morning is the best time to do deliveries because of the traffic yeah oh my goodness yes yeah especially if you have to especially you have to roll the bnbs off the trailer on a plank and then get them to their landing, you know, Ooh, to their final destination. Yeah. So, yeah. And, Thank and, you. Yep, you're welcome. Just kind of Let's brainstorming, go. you know. So I'll take what we're looking to plant this fall, divide it up by, you know, six trees and see okay. how many Wednesdays and Saturdays that is and see how tight it looks. If okay. it doesn't look tight, I won't worry about it. I won't contact you. But if okay. it does look tight... <laughs> Yeah, that works for me. I'll work with Jen on it. Okay. Um, any other questions, comments <laughs> about anything that's not on the agenda that anyone can think of? This might be the shortest meeting ever, possibly. I don't know. Um, questions, people? <laughs> It's awfully quiet. It is uh, awfully quiet. It's awfully quiet. Um. Okay. If no one else has anything, nothing else anticipated by the chair, you know, the business anticipated by the chair. I mean, we could entertain a motion to adjourn early if you would like. If that is acceptable to everyone, David. Dave, David, are your lips moving? 
David. Sorry, say that again. I thought your lips were moving. I didn't want to. Oh, well, I know. I'm telling my wife to quiet down. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, <laughs> I'll make a motion then. Right. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Okay. We have a motion is made. Oh, Do we have awesome. a second? All right. We have a second. Any discussion? All right. All in favor, just raise your hand, please. All right. Thank you, Bonnie. You could stop the recording.